Yeah, thank you and welcome to JMTVGH once again. And today I am here, uh, as you always know. You have to know your root, you have to know yourself, you have to know your ancestors, so that everything that they have left for you, you will know and you will enjoy it. So I am here with Mr. Jerry. Uh, he's the one who did a marvelous thing in Ningo, New Ningo, uh, uh, Pram Pram, an uh, ancestral wall that he has built, put our leaders, our warriors, our, our our ancestors on the wall for you to know so today i am here to because i wanted to know i have to go one by one and see their name and see where they are coming from and see what they have done for us so we will go till 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 it will not be a long conversation so just follow me and let us go and see why did he put this ancestor on the wall so that he can explain to us and tell us their name and tell us what they have done because he read about them that's the reason why he put them there. So we start the conversation and go. Mr. Jerry, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the African Ancestral World. Thank you very much. And mm. thank you for doing this uh, marvelous job and receiving JMTVGA to, to your house uh, or to your ancestral world to show us what you have done for our ancestors. Okay. So we will not waste much time. I want to you to take us through the, the, the first one, the second one, the third one, to the last path and what so far, you have know about those leaders. Okay, mm. okay. And again, it's not uh, what I've done for the ancestors, it's what the ancestors have done for us. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Mr. Jerry, let, let's start. Okay, mm. uh, well, we could probably start right down here at the end. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll come back this way. Okay. Uh, the first one on the wall is Apoka Kanyani. Apoka Kanyani was a woman, a Gruni woman from the Bolgatenga area. Okay. Uh, back during the slave trading times, they wanted to, a um, uh, slave raiding team came in to grab slaves from her place called Bukeri. Okay. She was able to use her pestle, instead of pounding millet, she pounded the leader of the, the raiding uh, okay. team okay. and was able to kill him. Wow. So after that, that became a place uh, that people were afraid to go okay. as far as trying to catch and acquire slaves mm. to uh, take into the slave market. So she's a hero there okay. for having done that. That's very great. That's Move. very great. So uh, Apoka Kanyani. Kanyani. Mm -hmm. Good, that's a great one. So let, let's. Now we move to, to Queen T, and I have to uh, make this statement mm -hmm. is that I built this primarily to teach the students. Okay. So I'll tell you what I was trying to let the students see okay. uh, yes. when they saw these. So, yeah. for instance, here, Queen T. Okay. This is one of the queens of the 18th dynasty, ancient Kemet, or what you would know as ancient Egypt. Yes. Okay, now she was one of the more powerful, influential queens, but the point that I tried to make to the students, I like to make to the students here, is that all of the, those ancient uh, African empires, all of the ancient so-called Egyptian civilizations were all African civilizations. They okay. called this, their place Kemet. Okay. Kemet, which is the black land of black people. Yes. So uh, I like the children to know because here in Ghana mm -hmm. and around the world, mm -hmm. whenever we see about ancient Egypt, yeah. we were always shown Europeans or yeah, Arab-looking yes. people, and none yeah. of them were there at the time. Okay. And these were African people, Queen T being one of the influential queens. All right. Thank, okay. thank you. Let, let's continue. Let's okay. come to then we come this to, one. Then we come to Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. I may have meant, you may have heard me mention this in the interview that we did a little earlier. Mm -hmm. But Mosiah Garvey, Marcus Mosiah Garvey said we had to build something of power and consequence on the African continent so we could lend protection opportunities to the race worldwide. Okay. And I think his formula was the right one. And so we're back here in Africa seeing what institutions we can build okay. to build power, build a nation, mm -hmm. build sovereignty in Africa mm -hmm. so that we have those things worldwide. All right. So Garvey was uh, had the largest black organization the world has ever known, United Negro mm -hmm. Improvement Association with over six million members on every continent. Mm -hmm. So our children should know this man, but right now they don't. And even our children in the U.S. don't, but we're teaching them small, small. Yeah, we're teaching them small, small. small. Yes, let's, sir. let's move on. So you come like this. And yes, now come to, here. Now to most Ghanaians who see uh, Kwame Nkrumah, of course, you know Kwame Nkrumah yeah. as your first president after uh, the colonial period. Yeah. Uh, but I, I included something here, not so much for the children, but more for the okay, teachers and so teachers and the adults. Yeah. And you see, we talk about uh, Nkrumah. He read all of these big brain Europeans, Hegel, Marx, Lenin, and the like. 
but the one who did the most to uh, give him motivation was reading the philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey, which is just right there. So what that does is it allows people to understand how great Gar uh, man Garvey was since he had this much influence yeah. okay. on Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. who is someone you all know. Yeah. Right? So when you see the Black Star Line, these all come from Marcus Garvey, okay. borrowed from Kwame Nkrumah, okay. because he saw the greatness in a Garvey. Okay. So that's why you see these okay. words. Okay. Since, since we are in New Ningo, we always have to give praise and honor okay. to uh, the founders of New Ningo, New Ningo. Okay. Jonas Kabu. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they call this area sometimes Kabu Kope. Kabu Kope. Mm -hmm. okay. And then Tejangma the first, who was the first uh, uh, chief of, of New Ningo. Jangma. Jangma. The first. The first. Yes. So these are the leaders of uh, Ningo. The founders of New Ningo. New Ningo. Founders New Ningo. of New Ningo. Okay. Yes. Okay. Which is where we are now. Okay. That's very good. So mm -hmm. let, let's move on. Let's keep let's moving. Move uh, you see, I chose the flags of. Uh, Ghana, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Jamaica, and the red, black, and green flag was the flag that Garvey and the other um, African movements, global African movements, have used. The red being for the blood, the green being for the land, and the black, of course, being for the people. Okay. Leazare, that's like Aquaba, mm -hmm. uh, in, or uh, Wezo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same Wezo, thing. Wezo, Aquaba. Yeah, Leazare. Okay. In the Gruni language, or okay, some people. So this is Lezari, that's the meaning. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, okay. In, uh, okay, in so the welcome Gruni to language. African ancestral world. Yes. And same thing at the dam. You're welcome. You're welcome. Le yes. Zari. Okay. Yeah. Le Zari. Right. So let's continue uh, to, to, to the, the biggest yes. one. That, that was the, the main leaders at the front there. And we we'll come to the warriors and the people. For those. So mm -hmm. many, so many, so many. Yeah, well, they were leaders who. Uh, you know, I just want then to intro introduce you to, before introducing the wall, that's okay. all. Okay. Okay. okay, so now uh, we go to the first one here, which is Eve. Eve is the mother of humanity. Many of our students and even our parents don't know that mm -hmm. somehow around 200,000 years ago, okay. it's the beginning of the human race as we know it, okay. Homo sapiens sapiens, okay. that's us, mm -hmm. 200,000 years ago in Africa. Let's now, move under the wall so that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was 200,000 years ago. Okay. Now, 70,000 years ago, mm -hmm. the Africans finally left Africa to populate the world. Okay. Which means for some 130,000 years or so, there was no one on the earth who was not an African on the African continent. There were no people anywhere else. Okay. Until we left and began to populate the world. Okay. Okay, so every other human being in the world comes out of this womb. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So majority of human history, even today, the majority of human history has taken place in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I call her Eve because it's really more realistic than this European or whoever it is that they put the in all of your Bible literature, school mm -hmm. literature, and all mm -hmm. the rest. That is just there to confuse uh, the children. Yeah. You see? Okay. So they project themselves as being the beginning of humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay when there's absolutely no proof of that, we have mountains of proof All right. that the thing started All right. with us. Thank you. That, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's very great teaching. So, so it's play, important for our children to know that. what he's saying. I don't want to ask many questions because he built it to teach the student. So when you call him, you come here and see whatever things here. You need more mm -hmm. explanation, he will give it to you so that you know who you are. That's the reason why I'm not asking much question because there are plenty. If I wanted to ask much question, we will not go today. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the next one. Okay. Quickly, Chinua Chebi, who was one of our great writers out of Nigeria. Okay. A lot of you will have to read a book called Things Fall Apart. But there's a lot of other books that he's written. Mm -hmm. Very clear and Igbo man out of the you know southeastern part of Nigeria. Okay. Very dynamic. That's 1932, 2013. 2013. Wow. Here Thank we you. also have Asa Hilliard. Asa Hilliard was one of the people who were teaching us when we were coming along. Mm -hmm. A very generous and beautiful spirit mm -hmm. and also a very, very intelligent man. Okay. He's a psychologist by training, okay. Egyptologist, historian, and all the rest. He also was installed. I have Ghana here too because he was in school, installed in the central region in Ghana okay. also as a chief there. Okay. 
Oh, that's very great. Yeah, Santa Wa, most of the Ghanaians will know her, mm -hmm. Queen Mother of Ajisu. Yeah. Uh, of course, struggling against the, the, the British. Yeah. So sometimes we'll even have the children talk about uh, quotes of hers that you've probably heard since you've been yes. in Ghana. Yeah. So very, very strong anti-colonial fighter. Who 1840 was... to 1921. That's, mm -hmm. that's very, very long uh, age. Yeah. Okay, Deron Kimathi, a lot of Ghanaians will know him mm -hmm. because Jerry Rollins' son was Kimathi, if you recall. Okay. And uh, he, I'm sure he, and he named him after this figure, okay. Deron Kamathi, because he was a freedom fighter against the British in Kenya. Okay. He started, they, he was uh, the leader of what they call the Kikuyu Land Freedom Army. Okay. Some people call it the Mau Mau. Uh, defiant all the way to the end. He went to the bush. He went to the, to the, the, the mountains mm -hmm. to fight the British to try to maintain mm -hmm their freedom and independence okay. from the British mm -hmm. who had taken all of the best land and all of the best resources okay. there in Kenya. That, that, that's this picture great, was yeah. after he was captured, so you can see the defiance never left him. Yeah, okay, that, that's very great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, uh, Nzinga, mm -hmm. Mbande of uh, Angola. This is another freedom fighter. Now we're back some 500 years ago almost. Uh, oh, she was struggling. To she was 60, struggling. 63. Yeah, and she was struggling against the Portuguese. Okay. Uh, the Portuguese, of course, are just another group who are coming to grab Africans to take to places like Brazil and other places to enslave and work. Uh, and she fought them there in, Brazil, there in Angola mm -hmm. over most of her life. Okay. A very, very strong warrior figure wow. there, Queen and Zinga. That's very good. I think a lot of you will... Um, Come to this way. Let's turn okay. it like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of you will know uh, Sergeant Ajete. Okay. Ajete here in Ghana was one of the three... It was Ajete, Atipo, and uh, Lamptey yeah. who marched on Christenberg yes. and were shot and killed by the British Major Emery. Mm -hmm. They were shot and killed because they were marching for their benefits that they were supposed to get after having served in World War II, mm -hmm. fought in Burma against the Japanese and all the rest. Mm -hmm. When they were shot and killed, it started the Accra riots. The, the Accra riots is when a lot of the leaders were jailed. And that was really the beginning of the unwinding okay. of the colonial order, wow. the British colonial order. That's very great. Uh, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, Maurice Bishop. Maurice Bishop uh, was a lawyer trained, a trained lawyer. He's out of Grenada, which is a tiny island in the Caribbean okay. with less than 100,000 people. He started something called a New Jewel Movement. Okay. It had raised the people's life uh, living standard up. Uh, raised the literacy to almost 100%, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things that he did in the country. Unfortunately, uh, the Western powers didn't like that because it was demonstrating that a, a small black country in the Caribbean mm -hmm. could be independent and sovereign, and that's not what they wanted. They wanted to keep him dependent and weak. So they bombed his country. That's from the U.S. government. Wow. Bombed his country, declared war on him, and, uh, of course, that was the end of their revolution. Wow. <clears throat> they only have 100,000 people, so they can't be any threat to anyone. Mm -hmm. It was just the threat was they were going to be a good example to the other small Caribbean yeah. countries. Uh, Nomaton or Amazon warriors out of Dahomey. Dahomey is today's Benin. Uh, basically, yeah, Dahomey, yeah. Mm -hmm, Dahomey, Dahomey is. is today's Benin. Mm -hmm. These women uh, <clears throat> organized and fought for Bahanzin and some of the other uh, kings there. They started out as security force, but they grew to be uh, one of his most fierce fighting mm -hmm. groups uh, and primarily in our case we're concerned about their fighting against the French, yeah. the anti-colonial wars against the French. You know, All right. They've made a movie now called Woman King. Okay. Um, I haven't seen it but um, we'll see. Okay. Edward Wilmot Blyden, he was born in the Virgin Islands, that's in the Caribbean, St. Thomas, but he had uh, later in his life moved to Liberia, established himself as a as a scholar, as a leader, as a diplomat, uh, started a university. Uh, one of our early, early fathers of Pan-Africanism. Okay. And even before Garvey, even before a lot of them, oh. uh, you had Blyden. You okay. see, he died in 19, 1912. Oh, so great. his most famous book that you'll know is Christianity, Islam, and the Negro Race. Okay. Steve Biko, usually when I bring the students, they will not have heard of apartheid. Okay like in South Africa, so I have to explain to them what apartheid is first. Okay. And then I explained Steve Biko being an anti-apartheid activist, okay. started Black Consciousness Movement, mm -hmm. uh, South African Student Association, all organization rather, 
Uh, he was killed by the South African government, you know, just because of his influential voice, especially with the youth. Wow. Sony Ali, uh, we have great empires of West Africa, Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Ghana, of course, is where Nkrumah and Co. got the name of the old Ghana Empire yeah. and renamed this Ghana. Gold Coast Ghana okay. when they became independent. But Songhai was the largest of those three West African empires. Okay. Sony Ali was the founder of Songhai Empire. Uh, very well organized, uh, had some four or five hundred ships on the Niger River. Oh. He had divided his nation into different 14 or 15 provinces. Very well organized society. Okay. Um, and he was a traditional African in terms of spirituality, even okay. though he was supposed to be a Muslim. So a lot of times you'll see the Muslims, uh, the Arabs particularly, he won't, treat, won't treat him very kindly yes. because they didn't like the fact that he was still practicing African spiritual okay. system. But Hans and I mentioned a struggle against the French, uh, that the ladies and the, the homemade warriors were, the, the Amazon warriors. Mm -hmm. In some case, they were led by uh, Bahanzen, who they called the Great Shark, who also struggled against the French. Okay. Um, also there in from Dahomey. Dahome. From Dahomey. And they, okay. were, they were his frontline troops, yes. these women. Okay. Uh, Mary Makiba, the great singer out of South Africa, uh, songs like Pata Pata and, and many others, but she was kicked out of the country for 30 years Ooh. because she was singing songs that were, you know, against apartheid. Yep. Okay. So once she was kicked out of the country, she sang all over the world, raising money, raising awareness, doing all these things uh, uh, to fight the apartheid regime there in yep. South Africa, you know, the whites and the, and the Africana Boers and whatnot. Uh, she was finally able to return 30 years later. Oh. So she's one of our great, great songstress and activists. Okay. The great scholar Sheikh Ante Jup. Sheikh Ante Jup was a, a scientist, physician, uh, um, uh, I want to say physicians, I mean a physics, physicist, okay. <laughs> chemist, and a whole lot of other things. But he's really the most important thing in our uh, discussion here is that he was the one who proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet mm -hmm. was a black African civilization. Okay. During the building of the pyramids, during the uh, development of writing, during all of these things, the mathematics, all of these things that developed in the Nile Valley, uh, these were developed by black African people mm -hmm. before other people came there. And so and he's, he's been able to demonstrate, demonstrate that uh, even at UNES, UN conferences, he's shown that clearly. J.J. Okay. Dessalines, uh, Dessalines in Haiti. Haiti is another small island. When the uh, French had colonized it and enslaved them, mm -hmm. they called the, they had changed the name of the island to Santa Domingue, which is not what the native okay. red people there called it. Uh, the Africans rose up, revolted in Haiti, took over the nation, mm -hmm. and kicked out Napoleon's army. And he and Toussaint Louverture was the leader, and he was like one of the big lieutenants. Toussaint was captured. Uh, in, in France, and he became the, the leader. Okay. When he got leadership, he took, took the name Haiti, Haiti because that's what the original people had named the place before the French came and renamed okay. it. Okay. Okay. George Washington okay. Carver was the agricultural genius of the day mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Um, people talk about it, what he did with peanut, but he soybeans and crop rotations and all of the things he was just ahead of all of his peers in terms of anything having to do with agricultural growth, science, and the rest. Tuskegee Institute in Alabama is where he uh, worked he his whole Africa? career. Is he from Africa? No, he, he's, well, no, he's, oh, he's African American. Okay, all right. But all right. he's uh, an African, of course. Uh, all right. Julius Nerere out of Tanzania, you've probably heard of him, one of the founders of the OAU back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, he was contemporary with Nkrumah and the rest. Uh, one of our best all-around leaders in that he was able to establish a certain kind of rapport inside his, in cooperation okay. inside his country uh, and also was able to provide material support for a lot of the frontline South African movements who okay. were trying to get their freedom. Okay. Zimbabwe or South Africa or Mozambique and the like. Oh, I Ephraim Mamou, I think you all should know Ephraim Mamou yeah. from Peki. Oh, yes. uh, what did you, what, tell me what you know about Ephraim Mamou. Ah, Ephraim Mamou, me. what about the, the song that you sing, that he wrote, uh, when you were going to all of your... Yeah, I know that. Um, you sing a song in the airway. Sing it in the airway, say it. 
You see the song, I don't know how to sing it. Uh -huh. yeah. well, but you know who it is. Yes. And, and the reason yes. he's on the wall is because he struggled against getting the, uh, you know, the, the influence, cultural influence of the British, the mm -hmm. songs, the clothes, the language, all of that. He tried to keep these things intact okay. uh, as African and avoid just being completely Europeanized, which was the trend of the time. Harriet Tubman in America, you know, we had slavery for several centuries. Yeah. And uh, she was one of the ones who struggled against slavery. She, she started what was called an Underground Railroad, which was really a secret path okay. to get Africans off of the slave plantations, okay. rescue them, and then run away to the northern part of the country or okay. even into Canada, okay. anywhere that they could have more freedom. Mm. And so she went back several times and she's really a profiling courage. Wow. And a lot of African students here don't really understand what was going on with the slave trade. Yeah. So this is when we get a chance to talk about that. Okay. Uh, Samora Michelle of Mozambique, he was a freedom fighter and nurse by training, uh, but he was able to uh, even come out of Tanzania, mm -hmm. who had provided him a platform to come into his own country and fight the Portuguese mm -hmm. to beat them and, you know, to kick them out during the colonial days. He was killed by a ac uh, plane accident that we believe was orchestrated <coughs> by the South African mm -hmm. uh, government. Nanny, she was born in Ghana, went to Jamaica, okay. worked there as a slave, but then finally she was able to free herself, okay. become an escapee, a maroon. She became so strong that they ended up giving a section of the island to her, mm -hmm. that is the British, yeah. you know, just in terms of a certain kind of truce. That's very, right. very powerful woman. All right, before we continue, I, I think you are following the, the, the teaching uh, Mr. Jerry, our papa, is giving us. I don't see some of them before, I don't hear the name before, and today we are here to go through. Uh, I want us to, to end this part here and continue this war to death because there are many, there are many. So uh, let's end this part, then we will continue the second session for you to, to know better, for you to see how our leaders, our ground ancestors fight for us. But today you are calling them source of name kind of thing. So let's end that here. My DOP was my big brother uh, Amewuga, who is handed the camera for me, and Mr. Jerry, who is showing us what our ancestors have done for us. Let me continue in the next episode. Thank you.